my name is Kat and today we're going to be knitting another chunky cardigan. So this is a walkthrough for my Ollie cardigan and this is my super beginner friendly cardigan pattern. So to follow along with this tutorial you will need my Ollie cardigan and if you use code YouTube you can get 15% off and you can get that on my website, Etsy, and Ravelry. So the pattern itself will have a bunch of pictures for you to follow along with just to compare like what you have with what I have and see like what your piece should look like as you're following each step. But this video is also to help you visualize a little bit more and just to walk you through and have me speaking to you and telling you what part to do. And this pattern is actually named after my dog, Ollie. Here he is. He's kind of curious about what's going on and he's feeling a little frisky and yeah. And I tried to find a blue that would match one of his eyes because he has two toned eyes, but it's not quite as light blue enough. And he also doesn't really like being held. So you might be wondering how this is different than my other chunky knit cardigan and there are a few ways. So the other tutorial is for the chunky game set match cardigan and the chunky game set match cardigan is knit entirely on 12 millimeter needles. There's a little bit of seaming and the panels are a little bit different shaped. While the Ollie cardigan is knit on 12 and 15 millimeter needles, it's entirely seamless and the panels are straight down rather than having like this slight like, curve in. But both patterns are super beginner friendly. However, I would say that the Ollie cardigan is probably the cardigan to start with if you are a pretty new knitter. And the Chunky Games and Match cardigan is probably more if like you've knit a few garments or even like the top first. So let's talk materials. So today I'm going to be knitting with Malabrigo Rasta in the colorway Cucumber. I absolutely adore this yarn and I love this colorway so, so much. Like it's just like the prettiest sea-ish green. I don't really know. And so obviously for materials, you're going to need yarn and it needs to be super chunky yarn because this is knit on 12 and 15 millimeter needles. And so you can play around and like try to hold multiple strands of yarns together, but whatever you do, just knit a gauge swatch so that you know what your yarn will look like once you knit it up. Like you can always play around and try to knit this cardigan with a bulky weight yarn. I would just, again, really recommend knitting a gauge swatch before and so that you know that you like like the lighter, more holy texture that you're gonna get when you knit with like 15 millimeter needles in that yarn. You're also going to need 12 and 15 millimeter needles and they both need to be circular because there are parts of this pattern that are knit flat and some parts of this pattern that are knit in the round. So for your very first step of this cardigan, you are going to be knitting a gauge swatch. And I promise you that this is a really good habit to pick up when you're a new knitter and even just to pick up as you're a more advanced knitter as well. I like to do this when I'm new to a yarn or just because I'm bored and I wanna see what that yarn will look like when it's knit up. And this will really help you figure out like what type of tension and texture you're gonna get from your knitting. So you should get a four by four little swatch if you use eight stitches on 10 rows on 15 millimeter needles. If you find that the length isn't quite matching up, that's okay, it's really more important that you get the width. And if your width is a little bit small, you can always size up. However, this is a pretty forgiving cardigan and that is supposed to be oversized. So I would just double check with that. Like if it's pretty close, that's probably fine. And if your gauge is a little bit, bit wider, that's also probably fine. You might want to just size down if it's pretty dramatic. Now, before we actually get into knitting, let's learn how to read the pattern. So the pattern goes from extra small to 5X. So there's nine different sizes. And so each of the sizes are separated by parentheses. So extra small is the first number, smalls in parentheses, medium, then so on and so on. Now, I really recommend going through and just highlighting the numbers for your size, just that you don't have to keep on counting each time to figure out like, yes, I'm the fourth number if I'm knitting a large, and so I need to cast on this number of stitches. You can just easily move your eye to the highlighted number. And for portions of the pattern that don't have those nine numbers, let's say it just says knit eight rows of ribbing, that means that all sizes need to knit eight rows of ribbing. So the next step, once we finished our gauge swatch, which you guys definitely did, right, is you're going to be knitting the bottom of the cardigan. So you're going to use a cable cast on to cast on however many stitches you need based on your size. So first you're going to create a slip knot, and sorry this is a bit fast, but you're going to place your slip knot on your needle, then you're going to insert your needle as if to knit, wrap your yarn, and then pull it through and onto the left needle. And then you're just going to insert your needle in between the two stitches from then on, wrap your yarn, and then pull it through and just keep on placing it back on the left needle. And this is how you do cable cast on, and this is my go-to cast on. Now, once you've casted on all the stitches for the bottom of the cardigan, you're going to start off with a one by one ribbing. You'll find that doing the ribbing with a smaller set of needles makes it a little bit neater. And as you're doing your ribbing and you're alternating between the knit stitches and the purl stitches, you're going to have to move the tail of your yarn back and forth and back and forth. And the way that I do it, I actually do continental knitting, although if you're a beginner, you should probably start out with an English style of knitting. So 
There are other videos to show you how to do the regular knit and purl stitches, and I recommend looking them up. So you are just going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and so you're going to knit, then purl, then knit, then purl. And I promise that the first row is the hardest, but after that, the rest of the rows are pretty easy. So you can identify that as a knit stitch and that as a purl stitch. Once you finish the ribbing, you can always add more here if you want a thicker bottom of ribbing, but I recommend just doing about eight rows here. You're going to switch to your 15 millimeter needles. So in order to switch from the 12 millimeter to the 15 millimeters, you're just going to have your stitches on the 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter needles and you're going to insert your 15 millimeter needle and you're just gonna wrap your yarn and you're just going to knit onto those 15 millimeter needles. So just start knitting onto your 15 millimeter needles from your 12 millimeter needles and just knit in regular stockinette. So you're just going to knit across the row. And now you're just going to be adding length to your cardigan and you're going to be doing the bottom portion. So this is everything that's underneath the armpits. And once you finish one entire row of knit stitches, you're going to turn your work, so flip it, and you're going to purl all the way back. So this is doing stock and net stitch, and you're just going to be doing this to, again, add length. And if you want a longer cardigan, because this is designed to be a little bit cropped, just keep on adding length here. This is the bottom portion of your cardigan, and again, if you want to add length to your cardigan, just keep on adding it here. But for now, you're just going to knit and stock and net stitch. So that's just knitting across the row when you're on the right side, and when you're on the wrong side, you're just going to be purling it. So when you have the V's, that's the knit side. And when you have the little bumps, that's purl side. Once you've achieved the proper length that you want underneath the armpits, you're going to be dividing and you're going to be working on your right panel first. So you should have ended on a purl row, which means that you just finished a purl row. And the next row that you're going to be doing is a knit row. So knit the stitches for the right panel, stop, turn your work, and then purl across those same stitches. Ignore the rest of the stitches that you had that are for the back and the left panel. You come back to those later, but you can always put those on a separate set of needles or a scrap piece of yarn, or you can just leave them on the needles and ignore them. So this is after I've knit all the stitches for the right panel, and then instead of working across the rest of the stitches, I'm just going to turn my work and start purling across. So this is just purling across the stitches for the right panel only. For the right panel, you're just going to knit and stock a net until the indicated length. And keep in mind if you added length here because then it'll adjust the numbers that you're supposed to knit to a little bit. Once you're done with the right panel, leave those stitches live and on hold. So cut the yarn and pass it through the first stitch just so that things don't come unraveled. And then you're going to start working on your left panel next. And to leave stitches live, you just don't cast them off. So you cut the tail and you just pass it through that first stitch so it doesn't come unraveled and then you're just going to leave these stitches and start working on the left. So you're going to hold up your work with the right side facing you, so that means that you have the little V's facing you rather than the little bumps. So this is the wrong side, this is the right side. So with the wrong side facing you, you're going to be holding up the stitches and you're going to be attaching to the rightmost stitches. It's confusing, I know, but those are the stitches for your left panel. And you're going to start with a purl row for the left panel. So you're going to attach a yarn to the wrong side again, and you're going to purl across the stitches for the left panel. So here it is with the visual aid. So with all the purls facing us, so this is with the wrong side facing us, we're going to attach our yarn to the rightmost stitches. And so you are just going to start purling as if your yarn is already attached. So you're just going to insert your needle. <laughs> Kind of tricky, I know. Then you're just going to insert your needle and wrap your yarn around, make sure you don't accidentally lose it, and then just pretend as if your yarn's already attached and just keep on purling across the stitches of the left panel. Then you're just going to knit and stock a knit on your left panel until it reaches the indicated length. And then you're just going to cut your yarn, pass through the work, and just leave it on hold. And now we're gonna work on the back. So you're going to reattach your yarn to the remaining stitches of the back and all of your stitches together should kind of look like a weird U. So there's like the two panels on the side that are much longer, and then your stitches for the back are gonna be much shorter, but soon they're all gonna be the same length. So you kind of see that U shape here, and you're just going to be working across the remaining stitches of the back. And so you're going to take your yarn, <laughs> and you're just going to reattach it to these stitches. So the way that you do that is you're gonna take your stitches that you wanna work on, you're going to insert your needle, loop the yarn over as if you're already knitting and then just keep on wrapping your yarn as normal and working and stocking it across these stitches of the back and you're just going to do this until you have reached the same length as the other panels so for the back you're just going to knit and stock in it and add length until you reach the indicated length once your back is long enough we are now going to be using three needle bind off to seam up the shoulders 
And so you can see here that there's the back and there's the front right panel, and we're going to be using 3 needle bind off to seam those together. And I know that I say that you're seaming it up, but honestly, like it's still seamless technically, and 3 needle bind off I don't consider seaming. Like it's so nice. So for 3 needle bind off, you're going to take the right side of both works and make sure that it, nothing's twisted and you're just going to place the right sides on top of each other so that the wrong sides are facing both ways out. And you're going to take your needle and you're just going to insert it into one stitch of the front right panel and one stitch of the back panel. And then you're going to wrap your yarn around both and make sure it's the right yarn and then pull that yarn through both stitches. And you're just going to repeat that step. So insert into one stitch from the right panel and one stitch from the back. Grab your yarn, pull it through, and then you're just going to cast off one stitch. And you're going to repeat this until you have no stitches of the right panel left. Then you're just going to cast off these stitches for the back only, and you're going to repeat this and cast off stitches for the back until you have as many stitches left of the back as you have for the front left panel. And then you're just going to repeat the three needle bind off. So now we have the stitches of the left panel left, and we are just going to place the right sides together again and then we are just going to do three needle bind off once more and so i know it's tricky make sure nothing's twisted and again you're just going to insert your needle into one stitch from the left panel and one stitch from the back wrap your yarn and pull that stitch through both stitches and then you're just going to cast off and you repeat this until you have one stitch left and then you're just going to cut your tail and pass it through so here we are with the last stitch and we are just going to cut the yarn and pass it through and this is how you finish casting off and then once you've done that you have finished your three needle bind off and you can see that it makes a really nice clean seam between the two and it's kind of seamless <laughs> once you finish seaming up the shoulders we are going to work on the button band and you're going to be using your 12 millimeter needles here because you're going to be doing ribbing so you're going to be doing your right button band first or you can do your left it doesn't really matter but i'm going to start with the right so starting at the bottom right panel, you're going to be using your 12 millimeter needles to pick up stitches all the way around here. Starting at the bottom of the right panel, you're going to take your 12 millimeter needles and you're going to take your yarn and you'll just insert your needle into the panel and you're going to wrap your yarn and then pull that stitch through to the other side and be careful you don't lose it. And you're just going to continue to pick up stitches going up that same column and I actually find that it's a little bit easy if you just insert between the stitches but about one or two columns in to make it neater. Once you finish picking up your stitches you're just going to do one by one ribbing until the end of the row. So we've picked up all these stitches of the right panel and we did it about one column in to make things neater and now you're just going to do one by one ribbing. So I'm going to start with the purl row, you can start with the knit row. So you're going to purl one, then you're going to knit one and then you're just going to continue this to the end of the row. Once you finish doing the ribbing, you can either add more rows here or you can just cast off. You're going to cast off in pattern and once you cast off, I would recommend leaving a long tail at the very top just so that you can seam the button band into the back panel. Once you finish your ribbing, you are just going to cast off in ribbing. So you're going to knit one, then purl one, and then you're just going to cast off one stitch. So this is binding off and ribbing. So you're going to knit one, purl one, and then cast off. And you'll just continue this until you get to the end of the row. Now we've reached the last stitch, and so we are just going to cut the yarn and leave a long tail. And we're just gonna use that for seaming next. Now for the left panel, you're going to start at the top, and I recommend leaving a long tail here, and that's just for seaming the button band into the back panel as well and you're going to move down and pick up stitches. Then you're going to knit your ribbing and then you're going to cast off and then seam in the button band into the back panel. So starting at the top of the left panel, you're going to insert your needle and reattach your yarn. And again, reattach it with a long tail just for seaming later. And then you're just going to pick up stitches evenly going all the way from the top to the bottom of the panel. And once you've done that, you're just going to do your one by one ribbing and then cast off and ribbing. Now you're going to take the tail and you're going to pass it through a needle and then you're going to seam the button band into the back panel. So you're going to pick up a stitch from the back panel and I just recommend picking up the V and then you're just going to pick up the purl side 
of the button band and I recommend picking up only one and this is like the minimal amount of seaming I'm sorry this is a little bit of seaming but it's super super teeny and this will just make sure that your button band doesn't flap around and then you'll do the exact same thing for the other panel once you've woven in all the ends and once you're done with the button band the body of your cardigan is done and you can try it on you could have tried it on before the button band as well but it's a little bit more fun once you finish the body now we're going to be working on the sleeves. So you're going to use your 15 millimeter needles here and you're going to pick up the stitch for the sleeve moving around the armhole. Using your 15 millimeter needles, you're just going to insert and then wrap your yarn. So you're reattaching it here. And then you're just going to pick up stitches moving clockwise around the armhole. And again, I recommend picking up the stitches in between the Vs and also about like one column in from the edge just to make things a little bit neater. And make sure you're picking up from the same column just to make sure that things don't look wonky. Once you've picked up all the stitches for your sleeves, you're going to place the stitch marker at the beginning of the round. And this is just to let you know that this is where you should start and end because once you're knitting in the round, all the stitches kind of look the same. So you're going to be knitting in the round here. So working stockinette in the round just means that you're going to be doing constant rows of knits. There's no purling. So we finished picking up the stitches of the sleeves. We're going to place a stitch marker and now we're just going to be knitting in the round. So this is just knitting, 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 knitting. Now you're just going to be knitting in the round and knitting in stockinette until you reach your desired length of sleeves. And you can try it on as you go to figure out how long you want the sleeves, but keep in mind that you add about three inches of ribbing here. Once you've reached your desired length of the sleeves, you're going to do your decrease row so you're going to knit two together all the way across the row. And this will decrease the number of stitches you have by half. So you're just going to insert needle into two stitches, wrap your yarn, and pull it through both stitches. And you'll just continue to do this all across the row and decrease your stitches by half. Once you've decreased to the right number of stitches, you're going to take your 12 millimeter needles and you're going to start knitting one by one ribbing. So take your 12 millimeter needles and you are just going to start knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one across the row. And you'll just do this for a few rows. Once you've finished your rows of ribbing, you're going to cast off loosely in pattern. And if you want to stretch your bind off, you could always do a tubular bind off or a sewn bind off. I find that you don't really need that just because super chunky yarn is pretty stretchy. But if you're using a yarn that has less stretch, I recommend doing a more stretchy bind off. So you're just going to knit one, purl one, and then cast off, and you repeat this until you have one stitch left, cut the yarn, and pass that tail through the last stitch. Finally, if you find that there's a little bit of a gap between the beginning of the row and the end of the row after you've cast it off, this is a little trick that I like to do to close up that gap. So pass the tail through, and then I like to clean things up a bit. So you're just going to thread your needle, and you're going to pick up the V of the very first stitch and then you're going to pick up the top V of the last stitch and this will close up any gap that you get from casting off in the round. And then after that, you're just going to weave in all your ends. So now it looks nice and even. Then just repeat for the other sleeve and then the last and final step is to weave in all your ends. And that is the entire Ollie cardigan. Hopefully it was pretty straightforward and I know that there was a little teeny tiny little bit of seaming but it was absolutely minimal. Hopefully you can make the cardigan of your dreams now and you can get into knitting if you're a beginner. But I honestly think that this pattern is great too if you're a more advanced knitter because like, who doesn't need a chunky knit cardigan? If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me or leave a comment. Thank you so much for supporting me and my patterns. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Happy knitting and see ya.